Hello everybody, this is Gerald Snivy and welcome back to more Let's Play The Last Remnant. Today, we're going to be finishing up this side quest once and for all. One other thing I forgot to mention in the last video, this side quest is going to be the last side quest that we're going to be doing for a little while. Yeah, after this, we're going to be returning to the main game. Finally, we're going to be doing more story-based content. Awesome, right? Oh yeah. It most definitely is. First thing we gotta do though is defeat these bullfighters. <laughs> I wonder if they're related to the Foo Fighters in any way. What are they, another pretender? What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I'm not like the other ones that are fake? Another pretender. I don't even know if those were even the right lyrics, but who cares? Bullfighters are going down. What can I say about them? Well, they can take quite a bit of a beating, much like dragons, but... Unlike dragons, at least they take a little bit of time. I mean, they don't take as long to take down as opposed to, as opposed to dragons. I guess another discussion I could go into is I in the last video I talked about how this let's play has been going on for a year and I got sidetracked by other things. More or less the reason why this let's play was, has been going on for over a year is because originally I planned to do this let's play in like one month intervals and whatnot. But that's not the case now. I'm here to finish the game and that's what that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna finish when I start it. Unless I run into a whole to another one of those technical issues when I lose everything and it's like I gotta start all over again. Let's just pray that doesn't happen. Please. I mean I am recording all my videos on the second hard drive that I have on my computer. By the way, I did get another internal hard drive. It's a, I think it's a two terabyte internal Western Digital hard drive. Yeah, I use that for videos. Awesome, right? Oh yeah. I think I even have Yoshi's Story on there too. I don't remember for sure. Oh wait, yes I do. It does have it on there. Speaking of which, I, I'm not sure why I haven't started backing that let's play up yet. Maybe I will in a little while. Maybe in a day or two? Not sure. Really depends on uh, what I'm doing that day. Let's see, what can I talk about today? I've mentioned before that I've recently got back into playing more Pokemon Black. And while I was playing, I caught my very first shiny Pokemon. Yeah, awesome, right? I can't even remember the name of the Pokemon. That's pretty sad. It wasn't one of the legendary Pokemon, though, so... Yeah, before you ask, it wasn't one of those, it wasn't like a shiny Lucario or anything like that. Like, it was, like I stated before, I just recently got my third gym badge and I'm not too far in. And here come the bullfighters here to spoil our party. Fun, huh? No, it isn't. They also appear in packs, so try not to fight any more than two at a time if you can. One other thing, most of this video is going to be fighting these guys. Fun, huh? No, it is.
Time for another whiteout. Time to white out these bullfighters. Oh yeah, double kill. Done a pretty good amount of damage. If I do say so myself. I guess one question I should ask is, have any of you guys ever seen the uh, Honey Boo Boo? I have not. I have not seen the show, but I have seen a parody to the South Park episode. And let me tell you, it, it is an incredibly stupid concept. I mean, you're making a reality show about an obese woman and her obese daughter. It's like, what? Why? Why are you making a show about that? I mean, really, come on. Obesity is a major issue within the United States, and it's like the one of the top five countries in the world to have the most obese people within the country. I'm not kidding. I think it's number four in the most obese country in the world. And again, it's probably number five. I don't really remember. I did recently see a list, but I can't remember the list off the top of my head. Another question I should say, or one other question I should ask, is, well, I did recently talk about the my first ever shiny Pokemon. If you play Pokemon, what was the name of your first shiny Pokemon? I would love to hear it in the comments section below. Seriously, tell me your stories. How did you catch it? I mean, how'd you find it, and what did you do to catch it? As for my first shiny, I just fought it like I normally would, get it down to low health, and threw a great ball at it, because that's the highest Pokeball level that I had at the time. Didn't have any Ultra Balls yet. Ultra Balls were not available. And they still aren't at the point in the game where I'm at. But I do have some other Pokeballs available, like the Neck Ball, Nest Ball, which I have no idea how that even works. But anyways, that's, that's not what I'm here to talk about. We have more stuff to do, and we're almost finished this freaking side quest. What else is there to say about it? The side quest just isn't that long. It really isn't. It's just a quick little trip through the basement part of Rebellia Castle. And that's really about it. The other room that was within the fork before, that's an optional room you can go into to get some extra treasures and defeat more enemies. And also to find the best grinding spot in the game outside the side quest Wisdom's Echo. Nice work, Mr. Diggs. Too bad it wasn't much, but hey, at least you got something. Let's do this. And with that, we're pretty much at the final door. The final door of this freaking place. Also, you need the treasure known as the... Shit, I wasn't even paying attention to the name of the treasure. It was in one of the rooms. Just a little bit further back. It's not too far. But you needed to unseal the door. Simple as that. And here we are. We're finally at the room where the supposed statue is located. But there's no statue here. It's just a mirror. And it looks like it's a mirror to the underworld or something. Who knows? But... Either way, it just looks weird. Uh oh, something's going on. And it turns out it's a collapse. A collapse is commencing. So, yeah, not good. We don't like collapses and collapsing is a horrible, horrible thing. So, 
we have three different types of enemies of which we have to take down here. The Grand Beetle, Landworms, and Spiders. Yeah. Wow. First guess. That was just a lucky guess. We shall stop them here. It's pretty much the same strategy as before when you're fighting them normally. Except these are slightly stronger. And have a little bit more HP. Yeah. Nothing really more to say about them. Just a uh, usual strategy. Pound them to the ground, end the story, everyone wins and walks away happy. And here you are. I guess I should go ahead and start talking about my playthroughs of Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus and also Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty. Since I played through both of those games recently, did I talk about Quest for Booty? I think I did a little while back, but I'll talk about it again just in case. I played through Quest for Booty and it was quite a fun little adventure. It was a very, very short game. I mean, like, really short. I am dead serious. It only took maybe about two, maybe three hours to beat. 100%. And you can even count it as 100%. Well, okay, no, I didn't get 100%, but it was more or less 95%. Still, relatively close. The second game that I... Oh, Jesus. The second game, Into the Nexus. That game was also short, but not as short as Quest for Booty. No. That game actually lasted quite a bit longer. However, I did read and also hear that the game was intentionally one of the shortest Ratchet and Clank adventures ever. Roughly four hours if you're not going for everything. If that at all. And like I stated, I've almost completed the game 100%, almost got all the trophies, about halfway through the skill points. Still working on getting all the mega versions of the weapons and getting them all upgraded to level 6. I find that pretty disappointing though. Because in the. Uh, Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal, I think you can upgrade a weapon up to a... up to a maximum of level 10 or something. And that's what the mega versions of the weapons... Even though they were expensive as hell. I'm not saying the weapons in, uh, in the Nexus weren't expensive. Hey, that's just me. More expensive than up your arsenal than they were in the... into the Nexus. Well, now that the collapse is done and over with, Kate is somehow resurrected. And she's here to see us. So, hi, how you doing, Kate? It's been a long time. How was the afterlife? Did you meet Jesus and God Almighty himself? What was it like up there? We would love to hear those kinds of questions answered. Unfortunately, we're not going to get that now, will we? Kind of sad, but whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. So with that, Rago gets to be with his sister again. Everything is all happy and merry. Which is really, really awesome. Also, Kate is now recruitable in the guild. She, for some reason, in my personal opinion, she's not as useful as Rago is. Because Kate is more or less built for physical combat than she is for mystic combat while her brother is the other way around. I'm not saying that's a horrible thing, but her stats at this point in the game just... it just feels like they're a bit lackluster for my taste. I would like them to be just a little bit stronger. Just a wee bit, please. That would be great. Also, Kate is kind of... And one of those moments when it's like, don't mess with her, she's going through the change, if you can catch my drift. 
Also, I am completely out of time. This is General Sniper with Let's Play The Last Remnant. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. Next time, we're going to be heading out to Illusion and continuing on with the main story for quite a bit of time. See y'all later.